Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It is Friday, October 28th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. A very busy morning for our whole weather team and Stephen. That's right. Well, let's go first now to Justin with the very latest on where the storms are now. Starting to move away from San Antonio. The rain, the heaviest of the rain is out of town now, moving into some of our eastern counties. We're still getting some lightning strikes, and the good news with all of this, we have not seen any severe weather this morning. It has all been Good rain, maybe some gusty winds mixed in there and some lightning and thunder, and that really is it. So as uh, we look at the city of San Antonio, things quieting down. We still do have a few light showers here and there, but you're going to start to see the winds pick up. Skies will clear. The heavy rain is moving in, well, just east of Seguin along I-10 and then along Highway 87. We've seen it move through Floresville now. Stockdale still dealing with some rain. Lavernia, the rain is ending for you. But uh, Nixon, Smiley, get ready for some rain to move into your neck of the woods. Falls City, the rain is still very heavy there. Carn City, heaviest of the rain hasn't arrived yet, but it will soon. About 20 minutes or so, you'll be looking at heavy rain. Same story for Kennedy and Rungi and Nordheim, uh, even Yorktown. Rain is going to be moving in your direction here. I'd say within the hour, these, uh, this line of storms itself is moving pretty quickly. But one more bigger view here. And yes, the rain has moved through San Antonio, so we are pretty much done. Skies clear, winds pick up today, and that's going to be the big story. Look at these wind gusts, 33 miles per hour here in San Antonio, gusting to 16 Bernie Stage, 28 Lost Maples, 22 in Uvalde, and we've got bigger gusts out west. Del Rio gusts to 35. So with these gusty winds and the dry air behind the system, there is a fire threat, especially out west, areas that did not get rain this morning. And as we look at the case, that 12-hour forecast, 66 at 9 o'clock which is where we are now, 68, 10 a.m., 70, 11 a.m., 76 by 2 p.m., and we top out in the 70s today. It will be somewhat of a cool day with those gusty winds. Friday night football, gusty winds, it will be cool. You may want to take the blanket with you. Those winds will make it feel a little chillier. And I know we've had some issues on the roadways, but it looks like things are maybe getting a little better, Stephen. Yeah, for the most part, Justin, thank you. As we get a look here, uh, US 90 is 16 to 4 is not an area that actually has improved. Maybe a little bit, actually, now that we're getting a wider look at Transcap, but not a whole lot. We did have a rollover vehicle that was actually under the overpass for quite a while. Uh, one lane of traffic is still getting by out there because we do have first responders that are still out there trying to clear this up. Notice that there was also another vehicle over here that looked like almost a small box trailer uh, that that uh, was off in the grass and that could be because it may have been involved, but nothing has been confirmed just yet. This is around loop 1604 and you can see those first responders have been busy. The good news is we do have some tow trucks out there, so hopefully we'll see this wrap up in the next few minutes or so. But as always, we hope everyone's doing OK. The rain definitely did a doozy in terms of slowdowns, but uh, we're still seeing that slowdown there off US 90 eastbound at 1604 as you approach the Alamo City, perhaps from Castroville. And check this out because we did actually Actually have a little bit of a backup there all the way to Montgomery Road there by three miles. So obviously traffic is still being impacted by this incident, an area that we will watch closely throughout the morning. But uh, better news up here. We did have some incidents, as I mentioned, uh, that uh, definitely were causing some problems off of I-10 westbound at Hebner Road. A crash looks like it may have already cleared. Lots of green out there, but those eastbound lanes, some yellow just popped up, which shows that we may have a slowdown taking place in that direction. So watch out if you're maybe traveling into the Alamo City along I-10. Let's get you to 281. We are still seeing a slowdown out here around those uh, around those southbound lanes near Bitters Road. Uh, there was a crash that was reported out there earlier. I checked the trans guide cameras. I'm not seeing any flashing lights out there anymore, so that's good news. But uh, just be on the lookout. We have had slowdowns throughout the morning, but a lot of that was likely due to some people just taking it slow out on the road. The good news is that we did actually not see a lot of activity in terms of crashes out on the roadways, which was maybe because people were taking our advice and getting out earlier rather than a little bit later. But let's get back here to US 90 loop 1604. If you have to travel through these eastbound lanes, be prepared for a slowdown. The roads are still wet in that area. Make sure to watch for those first responders as well. Mark stuff. Thank you. Top story this morning. A local man facing charges accused of stabbing his wife and two young children. San Antonio police say he was also stabbed and shot. They found all of them at an apartment complex on Burleson near Hackberry. As Katrina Weber tells us, the investigation went beyond that family's home. 
And we watched police go in and out of both of these apartments. They wouldn't tell us why they were searching both of them. Neighbors say that the victims lived in the single story apartment, a woman and two children who were all stabbed. The police got the call here to the 500 block of Burleson around three o'clock this morning. They say they found that woman and two children, four and five years old, all with stab wounds inside the apartment. They also found a man here who they say had been stabbed and shot. And they say that he is the suspect in in this case, all of them were taken to a hospital. A police would not release any details as to why this violence happened, but they say that this is a family violence case and they say everyone involved is related. We know they have been talking to neighbors in this apartment complex. They also tell us that they found some evidence here. Uh, the only condition that they told us was of a five-year-old child who they told us was in critical condition. But again, all four people found here with wounds taken to a hospital, and that is where they are now. Reporting from the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Well, after yesterday's hearing in Austin about the Robb Elementary School shooting in Uvalde, families still feel like they haven't got, they've got nowhere with DPS Director Steve McCraw. And McCraw isn't backing down, saying he will not resign, like many have called for, unless the department failed as an institution. The response. These are a few takeaways from the testimony the yesterday. Like During his testimony, McGraw did admit that DPS was wrong for delaying entry into the classroom where the shooting was happening. He said the shooter should have been stopped within 10 minutes instead of remaining in the room for more than an hour. McCraw also said the criminal investigation into the response will be finished by the end of the year. Yesterday was also the first time the family spoke publicly face to face with McCraw. State Senator Roland Gutierrez, who represents Uvalde, also made public comments saying that McGraw and the DPS were withholding information from the families. Gutierrez and the families also saying that McCraw placed blame on others like the Uvalde School District Police Department and school employees. Here's just some of what was said yesterday. If you are a man of your word, yeah. then you would you would retire. Yeah. Well, but yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like you're going to do that because you keep talking in circles. Now there is very little communication between myself and your department. Well, I would like other to, than, I would like to change that right me now. having to sign a non-disclosure agreement every time I talk to you. I'd like to change that right now. You set the town on fire. People begin to blame the families uh, for loss of employment, early term, you know, terminations, early retirements, things like that. But it wasn't us that did that. It was Mr. McGraw and his administration that created this big mess in the beginning. This is an absolute tragedy, um, and we'll do what we can to support the community and continue to do it. And, and I don't expect ever, ever to, to forgiveness. After yesterday's hearing, a nonprofit organization formed by several of the victims' families issued a statement saying, in part, quote, the Department of Public Safety promised an update into their investigation of the Robb Elementary School shooting. That did not happen. Instead, in a bait and switch, they hosted a glorified press conference and once again refused to accept responsibility for their failures. The department's actions yesterday were incredibly insulting and disrespectful to grieving families who traveled hours to Austin to hear this promised update. We call upon the Department of Public Safety and the commission to provide the real update of their investigation and for it to be hosted in the community impacted by this tragic event, Uvalde, Texas, end quote. There was much more that was said yesterday. These were just some of the key points. To read the full story and the full statement from the Lives Robbed group, head to ksat.com. When your morning headlines, another warning about a social media challenge, and Elon Musk is all at Twitter. Plus, a hero saves a family from a house fire and a simple but yet scary Halloween decoration. David Sears is here to explain all of these. Happy Friday, David. Happy Friday. We're just a few days away from Halloween. Yeah. Yes, we are. Got those decorations up. We'll show you a new way to decorate your front door. Okay. Very interesting. First, let's start with this. Another negative for social media platform TikTok, the popular site being blamed for promoting a deadly challenge called the Kia Challenge. The challenge is to get someone to steal a Kia or Hyundai car because there's a defect in the vehicles which makes them easier to steal. A 16-year-old in New York believed to have taken that challenge, stole the car, crashed, and then killed four passengers ranging in ages from 14 to 19. He is due in court today. The alleged defect with the cars allows them to be easily hotwired. I know uh, Kias are widely publicized. The Kia Challenge, as it's called, they are very easy, unfortunately, to steal. The TikTok Challenge uh, is just basically teaching people how to do it, which is pretty crazy. 
Yeah, cities across the country seeing an increase in overall call thefts. In Buffalo, thefts up 90% since 2020. 253 Kias and Hyundai stolen this year. In Los Angeles, 1,600 Kias and Hyundais have been stolen this year. One county near Los Angeles, Orange County, going so far as to file a lawsuit against the two car manufacturers, blaming older technology in the cars. And St. Louis city officials also threatening to sue. They want the company to issue a recall. He is known as the self-described chief twit now. Elon Musk is the owner of Twitter. After going through his original $44 billion deal, he actually tweeted out, the bird is freed. Didn't waste any time making changes. Before he could get his name on the door, he fired the CEO and CFO, along with several other top execs. He has said he would cut the workforce by 75%. Musk has said also that He's about free speech, free expression of ideas. He said he will not permanently ban users and is expected to reinstate past users who have been banned, like former President Donald Trump. Although Musk has also stated that, quote, Twitter obviously cannot become a free for all hellscape where anything can be said with no consequences. Musk said he bought Twitter to help humanity. All right, there is your hero for the weekend right there. And look at all these flames coming up on the front porch of this house. This is in Iowa. That is Brendan Burt, who went to the side of the house and started banging on the windows, trying to get anybody's attention inside. Once again, this happening in Omaha, Nebraska. The smoke alarms weren't working. There were four siblings inside. You can see three run out the front door through the flames and the smoke. And then moments later, the oldest brother is able to make his escape through more flames and smoke. I don't know, I just felt like somebody was in there because it was so late at night, you know, I got this new that I'd act quick. Everything was just black in the living room. There was nothing left of it. Yeah, here's the twist of fate. Brendan actually made a wrong term in that neighborhood, and he just happened to be on the wrong street at the right time. And as you can see, Mom, who was out of town when the fire struck, she gave Brendan a hug, grateful to him for saving her family. And finally this morning, just a few items from around the house. You got yourself a Halloween door scary enough to keep the kids guessing. This is in Iowa. This is the monster door after the well-known cookie monster door. Greg Dietzenbach is a designer. It's a 10 day $200 project in the path. He made a prototype and then went to work on the life size monster door. The arms are broomsticks. The video eyes looped on an old TV and the mouth is just taped up with styrofoam and some purple fur. He ties a line to the shoe and that's what moves the mouth. In the end, it pretty much looked like I killed a Muppet. A <laughs> poor Muppet. Oh, come on, it's not that bad. But he is able to scare the kids. The only problem with the monster door doesn't open. So he's got to crawl through the window to get his house. You do it for your art. I guess so. Look, yeah. at, that's pretty good, though. It's pretty good. Doesn't even look real. It looks like a computer animation. Yeah, yeah that is so cool. Yeah, that would that would scare some kids for really? sure. And very, adults. Very clever. But you got to figure his arms are going to get tired and his leg get oh, tired yeah. after a while. So he's going to have to sit down and take a rest. Yeah, you almost need backup help. But there you go. If you're looking for ideas. That's a good just, one. You know, <laughs> chop up your front door. <laughs> if you, and if you move fast, you can make it happen in time. Exactly. All right, David, thank you. All weekend. Yes, sir. It's true, we had right. time. Yep. 910, about 64 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. So this mall isn't just a place to shop. It's been transformed into a haunted house. You can check out our visit to Haunted Oaks out at Rolling Oaks Mall in just a few minutes. Plus, a local nonprofit on the west side is honoring the lives of volunteers and its founder at this year's Muertos Fest, how they've changed the lives in this community. Next. Outside with live cam, it has been a stormy morning for most of us here in South Texas. Those storms continue. And wait till you see Justin's weekend forecast. It is an absolute beauty. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We've got a new severe thunderstorm warning now that we do need to pass along. This is for Carnes and DeWitt County. This is going to go until 1015 this morning. And it's for this storm here. You see how it's kind of comma shaped. Well, that tells us right in here, we've got some very strong winds, gusts to 60 miles per hour possible with this storm. And this is the main concern, and it's going to be along this corridor here. So we're going to watch out for places like Yorktown, Quero. But at the moment, Carn City and Kennedy, you are under the gun with this severe thunderstorm warning. Again, it goes until 1015 this morning. So let's zoom in a little bit closer. And this is right along. 181. You can see all the lightning strikes, the very heavy rain, but it's the winds that we're concerned about. So what we're going to do is uh, switch over to the uh, storm relative velocity here, which will help us get a sort of snapshot of the winds and we can query 
uh, and take a look at how strong those winds potentially are. And this is not showing uh, huge wind gusts here, but I think that they're, they're much, much stronger than that. And so we'll clear this off. Uh, but I do think the winds are significantly stronger than what, what we're showing there, probably around 60 miles per hour or so. I don't know that we've got any ground truth with that, uh, but that's sort of the uh, general idea. And again, this is going to go until uh, 10 15 this morning, and it's right in this area where you're going to get the very, very strong winds starting to move in around Carn City and then eventually making its way towards Kennedy here very, very soon. Gust to 60 miles per hour, straight line winds. We know what kind of damage that can do. Uh, it can do quite a bit of damage, in fact. So if you're along 181, this is an area where I want you to uh, take cover. Just be aware that this is a severe storm, and we'll put it back on radar and we'll show you that. Uh, yeah, there's the heaviest part of the storm, very heavy rain moving through Carn City as we speak and then starting to move into Kennedy and even along State Highway 123 there and 80, you're going to get some uh, very heavy rain and in, it's right where this sort of thing, uh, this, this line here is bowing out is where we would be concerned about the uh, significant wind gusts, Rungi, you're also going to be in the path of this storm and what we can do is put a track on it and uh, let's see here not what we want to do we'll clear this off we'll try this one more time but we can put a track on this storm and it's going about 50 miles per hour so this thing is racing uh we'll put it not not quite 60 but we'll about 48 miles per hour we'll try that so rungi about 923 is when you can expect this storm and those very strong winds yorktown about 939 as this storm progresses east rather quickly and you are within that severe thunderstorm warning that again goes until 10 15. Falls City you're on the back side of this same story for both but uh, Carn City Kennedy you're seeing it right now Rungi, Nordheim, Yorktown and then eventually Quero you're next in line to see these storms. Now what I want to do here is now that we've uh, discussed that a little bit I'll zoom out and I'll show you that these storms are well east of San Antonio at this point. We're still seeing some showers there on the northeast side, shirts, but this is all very light stuff and most of San Antonio now has cleared out. So let's jump into the forecast here very quickly, keeping in mind that we do have that severe thunderstorm warning once again down to the south and east of San Antonio. On the back side of the system, which is very dynamic, we're going to get some gusty winds today. Uh, gusts potentially up to, I'd say, uh, maybe 35 40 miles per hour in some cases out west and this is the scene here in san antonio now i know that looks kind of ominous but it's 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 not we're just seeing the kind of the edge of the clouds here it is cloudy 64 degrees dew point is at 60 with north northwesterly winds at 21 gusting to 33. and you see the stronger gusts out west rock springs you valley hondo gusting to 37 gusting to 30 increase those springs and then here around san antonio hondo is the biggest gust we see there gusting to 37. Temperature wise, we're at 64. A lot of places in the 50s and 60s. It's going to be a cool start to the day. Once we see some sun this afternoon, which we should, uh, we'll get uh, temperatures to warm up some. Now, these storms again progressing east, and by midday, they're probably moving out of the area. Then we get the gusty winds behind it. We'll watch for some clouds that try to dip south and perhaps affect our area tomorrow morning. But I think by Saturday afternoon, we're back in the sun. Winds do still stay strong, though, into Saturday afternoon. So 70 noon time today will be around 76 by 3 p.m. That'll be our high temperature. Gusty winds all day long. That includes for Friday night football tonight. And the extended forecast will go 72 tomorrow, 78 Sunday, 77 for Halloween. We've got another rain chance coming up on Tuesday. It's looking better and better. 30% chance of rain as it stands right now. We'll continue to update you on that severe thunderstorm warning in DeWitt, Carnes County until 10:15 this morning. More updates throughout the show, guys. Thank you, Justin. Time now, 919 and 64 degrees for now. Right now, we want to do a traffic alert, show you we've got a problem now showing up on Transcat. This is 410 westbound right there at 281, I believe. Stephen Cavazos is going to have details on this latest incident here coming up on GMSA at 9. All right, I'm back at 923 with a traffic alert. So let's get a look there at 410 at Broadway. I was just talking to our friends at Transguide on the phone. Uh, notice those flashing lights there on the on ramp. That's actually going west toward 281 and uh, traffic right now. It looks like it's actually blocked off traffic. If you're trying to get up onto 281 from 410, uh, looks like we may be having some issues with the Transguide camera out there, but let's get you to the map, show you where it's at. Uh, we are seeing the buildup there as people are approaching the on ramp uh, to get onto 281, but just be careful out there 
there. It's not the only issue we've been tracking throughout the morning. I still have this issue right over here along to uh, US 90 eastbound at loop 1604. One of the trans guy cameras that's been out there has shown the cleanup progress, which is good. Uh, looks like we could be on the, the midst of clearing that up, but for the most part, traffic is quiet right now, which is good so we can let the roads dry out. Justin Horn. Stephen, thank you. We've got a new severe thunderstorm warning that just came out on top of the one we just showed you, and basically it's just to extend it north. This is the general idea because we know we've got some strong winds within this line. You see how it's kind of comma shaped? And a lot of times when it bows out like that, we know there's probably some strong winds somewhere in there. So the potential of winds of up to 60 miles per hour, uh, and this now includes Wilson County and then up towards Gonzales County uh, to basically extend this warning north. And this is also going to go until 1015. That's correct, right, Mia, 1015 with this one as well? Okay, perfect. Uh, yeah, meteorologist Mia Montgomery in here with me, helping me out. So along Highway 87 there, this is where you're going to start to see some of these stronger winds coming in, and we'll pause it. Uh, so if you're watching us from Poth or Floresville, the risk has passed you by. You're not going to see these strong winds. But it's areas here in far northeastern Carnes County, and then say the smiley area, you're within this warning as these uh, storms are now at this point racing east. We're moving like 50 miles per hour now, so uh, these storms are moving very quickly. And we still do have these warnings, uh, the warning down to the south, which includes Kennedy and Carn City. And the, the main threat with this warning is those straight line winds gust to 60 miles per hour. So Rungi, you're just starting to see those winds as uh, it moves a little closer to you. And then in Kennedy, seeing some very, very heavy rain at this point. And this will continue to progress east again at a pretty good clip. Uh, these warnings will go for a while longer. This is kind of the last of these storms moving out. As you look north, the storms are fairly weaker, but uh, still some rain moving towards Gonzales. And eventually this makes its way towards Howitzville. So those are the two warnings we have right now. We'll keep you updated. If any more warnings come out here in San Antonio, things are clearing out. And we've got more Good Morning San Antonio on the way. We'll be right back. It's about a week left for early voting, and so far over 125,000 people have already cast their ballot here in Bear County. Polls are open until 6 p.m. today, and tomorrow you can vote from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and Sunday. Polls will be open from noon to 6 p.m. Next week, polling locations will be open from 8 to 8. Very easy to remember to find a list of those spots. Head to KSAT.com. You can also find other resources on our website, including a look at a sample ballot and articles about key races that we are watching. And we're pretty busy here. High school football, Spurs game tonight, World Series begins tonight, and we even have soccer playoffs. That's a lot going on. David back with a look at the big matchups this weekend. What else do you need, huh? Nothing. Let's Good. get right to it. Let's start with high school football tonight. It's big. Windy out there, so those field goal kickers might have a little tough time, but we'll see. Sub 5A poll, Bernie Greyhounds are number one. Somerset Bulldogs are number eight. They're playing in Somerset. Home to the world's most famous Frito pie. Been there, tasted it. I know it's true. <laughs> Eight and O, the Greyhounds. Three and O in district. Forty-five points a game. Bulldogs are seven and one. The district title on the line. Kickoff in Somerset, seven o'clock. Number one, Steel. Eight and O. Four and four against Judson. Neighborhood rivalry. Cliche. Throw out the records. They, these guys know each other, so you know it's going to be a big battle for that one tonight. That one's taking place at Judson. All right, let's move on to the Spurs tonight, 730. Stephanie's going to be hanging out all night long watching this. <laughs> it's the Spurs coming off that massive road trip. Man, you've got to give them credit. Good. Three and one on the road trip. It was awesome. They looked great, yeah. didn't they? Yes. They are three and two for the year. Devin Vassell, Josh Primo missed the last game in Minnesota. We'll see what they're doing. They got the shoot around today at 10 o'clock, so we'll find out after that if those two guys are going to play. But they play tonight, 730 AT&T Center against the Bulls. Moving on to the Cowboys this weekend. Zeke did not practice yesterday, got a sore right knee. If he cannot go, he wants to play Sunday, but if he can't go, that means Tony Pollard will get the start. Not much drop off there. Matter of fact, probably no drop off. They're playing Chicago. And then after they play Chicago, they get a bye week. So a lot of these guys might be able to suck up some of these injuries that they're dealing with because they know that they're going to get the next week off to heal up. So we'll see how that works. So this Bears and the Cowboys, Bears and the Cowboys, Sunday at noon. And then at 3.05, it's the Titans and the Texans. Astros tonight, game one of the World Series against the Phillies. Justin Verlander is going to be on the mound. 
He is the second pitcher in MLB history to start a World Series in three different decades. Roger Clemens is the other one. He's looking for his world's first World Series win, though. He's like 0-6 in World Series appearances. Remember, the Astros swept the Yankees. They're taking on the Phillies, who beat the Padres to get to the World Series. 7-0-3, Minute Maid Park is batter up time. It is game one. They play two at home, three on the road, then two at home if they need all seven. And good luck to the San Antonio FC tonight when they host Oakland Roots SC in the Western Conference semifinals. Toyota Field, 730 to finish with the best record in the United Soccer League and are the top seed heading into the postseason tournament. If that's not enough for you, tomorrow, Aggies at 630, Texas Tech and Baylor at 6 or 630. UT is off this week, and so is UTSA. Wow. That's Anything else? <laughs> That's the quickest no, sports I've ever heard. Everything but lawn darts there, Sears. Yes. All right. Well, you know what? Maybe we can find some lawn dart activity okay. going on okay. this weekend. It's on, ES week. it's on ESP8. The and and what, what is that? Uh, What's what's the game? You throw the the, the bocce ball the, or no the ball? beanie the bean bag into the oh. uh, cornhole. Oh, uh, cornhole! You know that's on like the ocho. That, that's Peter on Piper the ocho. Pizza. So there you go. So, all right, David. So. Thank you, sir. Thank you. you got a lot in there. Yes, a lot Just, with weather as well. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I, well, and it's it's uh, busy over here in the weather department. We're watching these uh, storms that continue to progress through the area, but we've got a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings that we need to pass along. These are going to go until 10:15, and we showed you a little bit earlier. And, and the reason these warnings are in place primarily is because of wind. We think we could get some gusts maybe up to 60 miles per hour, although I'll tell you with the last couple sweeps of the radar, these storms do look a little bit weaker, especially on the southern extent here around Kennedy. There is a little cluster there south of Kennedy, but uh, I think for the most part, this is rain. You could get some of those gusty winds though, and that's what we want to warn you about. So let's zoom in a little bit closer here. These have moved through Stockdale now, so you're done with the rain in Stockdale. Smiley is the next uh, place in line here to get some of this heavy rain and perhaps some of these gustier winds. I will go ahead and pause it here and we'll switch over to uh, the velocity and see if we can see any of these stronger winds. And really, honestly, we haven't seen just a, a huge showing of these, these strong, powerful winds, but they very well could be there. And where you see some of these brighter green colors or where we could see some of those stronger winds, perhaps just south of Smiley. And then as you look down towards Yorktown, this is a place where maybe we can get some gusty winds as well. We'll switch it back over to the radar. And again, the rain is affecting Kennedy still. You've gotten some very heavy rain out of this. I would imagine you could pick up some good totals here just considering how long this is kind of set there. And then Rungi, you're also now seeing the very heavy rain as it moves east. Uh, pretty quickly, the, these storms are moving at about 50 miles per hour, so they are not playing around. Uh, let me look at some of the uh, the rainfall very quickly, if we can, uh, because we do want to show people just how much rain is falling or falling with these storms that have, has already fallen. Uh, you can see around Kennedy there where you start to see these green colors. That's where you've picked up some pretty good rain. That's estimating over an inch uh, there just west of Kennedy. And for San Antonio, uh, more on the order of about three tenths of an inch. That's what we saw at the airport. But some places there in southern Bear County did pick up some good rain. You see a swath there on the north side where we probably saw close to an inch. Same story on the south side. So in general, it was a quarter to half, then some places up to an inch. We're still watching those severe storms. We're going to keep an eye on them. That goes, those warnings go for uh, Carnes County, DeWitt County, Gonzales County until 10:15 this morning. More on those storms coming up in just a bit, guys. Thanks, Justin. All week we have been taking you through different creepy hot spots around town. This morning the crew decided to check out Haunted Oaks out at Rolling Oaks Mall. And earlier this morning on GMSA we started our adventure. Now we're meeting some of the cast behind the spooks. I know that we're more gruesome than a lot of other haunted houses out there. But that's what we want. Like, we want y'all to be in that experience. Are you sure it was me? Like if it's your birthday, you come in, we hear that it's your birthday, we literally start saying happy birthday throughout the hunt. We find out your name, it's free game. We say your name throughout the hunt, we yell it. This is really creepy. 
we really invite all ages as long as the parents are okay with their kids coming in. The, the kids get glow sticks and we interact with the kids as well. We won't scare them, like they just point their glow sticks at one of our actors and we fall to the floor for the kids. Are you breathing? No, I'm not no. breathing. I stopped breathing a long time ago. Okay. I said no. down and have fun. Do you have a friend with you here? Yeah, this is my, my little piggy. <laughs> this is crazy. Oh my God. Like I said, I I'm shook right now. I feel like I say that all the time, but it was pretty crazy. This one was pretty crazy. Oh, like, I think I screamed a lot. I, oh, I know you screamed a lot. <laughs> it's important it was way longer too than I thought. Like, yeah, that was, uh, that was a really long thing. It was intense. We made it out. We survived. Y'all should check it out. Two of our executive producers, Emily and Joy. Our producer, Alex, just said. Yeah, she said she'd stick with the car wash. Nope. She said, no thanks, <laughs> I'll stick with the haunted car wash. Yes, the windows are up there. 937, 63 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. Outside with live cam, rain moving out. Some of you are still under the gun. We'll get another recap coming up. Welcome back. We still do have those severe thunderstorm warnings that are going to go until 1015 this morning. And these yellow boxes you see here. So this uh, is basically Carnes County, uh, DeWitt County, and parts of Gonzales County. And these are the areas that uh, we think that uh, there will be uh, maybe some strong winds. I, I think that's probably the biggest issue, although with the latest sweeps of the radar, these storms do appear to be weakening. So hopefully this is just some rain for you and you don't get any of these winds. There are uh, worse indications maybe earlier that we had some gusts up close to 60 miles per hour. I can't completely rule that out at this point. And I, I still think there's some strong winds with these storms, but maybe not quite as strong as they once were. So let's zoom in a little bit closer uh, to where the heaviest of the rain is. And we talked about Nixon and Smiley. The rain is now on your doorstep. Uh, the heavy rain is between Smiley and Stockdale there along 87 and then north and south along Highway 80. Uh, you're getting some pretty heavy rain right now. And then down towards Rungi, Kennedy, and Carn City, the rain is still holding on here. And this is probably the heaviest storm that we see on the radar. So where you see some of these pink colors, that represents some very, very heavy rain just south of 239 there. And it looks like we just got an update with these warnings. Yeah, it just pushed them a little further to the east, looks like, cutting out some of these areas. But uh, that's, the, that's kind of the bottom line. Cuero and then uh, north and, and to parts of northern DeWitt County and south of Gonzales is where we still can see some gusty winds. We'll keep an eye on that. Rain, by the way, moving into Gonzales and Luling, seeing some heavy rain within the city of Gonzales at this hour. Not a lot of lightning strikes. This is mainly just moderate to heavy rain. And then along I-10, just east of Luling, some rain there. A few very light showers holding on around San Antonio, around Floresville and Seguin, but these will very quickly come to an end. And around town, we're still seeing clouds, the rain for the most part has ended. We picked up about close to four tenths of an inch at the airport. There were some other spots that saw some better rainfall totals. And what we can do is uh, switch it over to the uh, radar estimates and give you a general idea of how much rain we saw. Now these are not going to be exact, uh, but over the last, uh, we'll say 24 hours, uh, you can see that the heavier rain was south of San Antonio, Poteet, Pleasanton. This is where we're estimating around an inch within the city near the airport. Uh, that's estimating about two tenths. I, we did see a little bit more than that, so that may be underestimating it just a bit. And then up on the north side, close to an inch. We'll uh, finalize some of those rainfall totals to you, for you, and get those to you here uh, over the next several hours. But uh, we also rely on what you're showing us via KSAC Connect. And this uh, viewer sent this in from Atkins, and they picked up about 1.5 inches, and so good to see. Uh, I think there's going to be some spots where we have these kind of numbers and, you know, by and large, there wasn't a lot of severe weather. It was just rain and that's exactly what we needed. As you go outside right now, we've got cloudy skies, still some clouds holding on 62. Dew point is at 58 and very gusty winds, gusting to 22 at the airport. We're seeing some gusts 30 to even 40 miles per hour to the west of San Antonio. These are areas that didn't get a whole lot of rain and that's where you're going to have a fire danger later today with gusts potentially up to 40 miles per hour. But these stronger winds are starting to move into San Antonio. Expect gusts here 25 to 30 uh, through the lunch hour. Temperature wise, we're in the low 60s with those clouds hanging around right now. We're not going to warm up all that much, but once the sun does come out and I think that happens this afternoon, the temperatures will uh, probably jump uh, close to 70 at least. Uh, you see the back edge of the clouds there 
trying to work through Bandera, Hondo, and eventually they make their way towards San Antonio. Then this line progressing very quickly east and should be out of our area within the next couple of hours. You can see the storm system on water vapor. This is a dynamic system. I mean, you see the spin. It uh, dove south towards our area, and that's why our rain chances were just a little bit higher uh, when compared to the last storm system. So 68 degrees at 11 o'clock, 70 noontime. We'll call it partly cloudy by then, and I do think we see quite a bit of sun this afternoon, which will push those temperatures into the 70s. But clouds return a little bit tonight and into tomorrow morning. We may start off with some clouds before we break out into more sun tomorrow. Uh, depending on how quickly those clouds clear, that'll you know, make a, a, that could have a big impact on temperatures. So right now we're going 72, but if the clouds hang around a little bit longer, it could be cooler than that tomorrow. And be advised it'll be windy on your Saturday. 78 Sunday, 77 for Halloween. We do have another chance of rain showing up on Tuesday. 71, 30% chance of rain Tuesday afternoon. Thank you, Justin. Ken Daniel, Dia de los Muertos at Hemisphere is benefiting a West Side nonprofit that's been providing resources to the community since the 1960s. Tiffany Huerta shows us how the organization is changing lives and who they are honoring at this year's event. It's wonderful to see neighbors down there celebrating the wonderful altars reflecting great people of inner city. Patty Radel, the co-director of Inner City Development, says this year's Muertos Fest is extra special. It'd be the second time we've participated in the procession, um, but this time uh, it's special to us because we are recognizing the founder of Inner City uh, who died this past February. His name is uh, Ralph Ruiz. For many years, the organization has provided resources to the West Side community and helped people experiencing homelessness. And what we do together is to provide emergency services for families in need. <clears throat> it may be um, food or clothing or some advice and counseling. Um, we also have a lot of recreation for children. We have a wonderful summer program. We have a very active basketball league in the spring. The nonprofit opened in 1968, and since then, hundreds of volunteers have participated. This year, they're honoring about 20 of them. One person many people know is Gabe Rivera. He was uh, one of the Pittsburgh Steelers, but to us, he was a wonderful volunteer. The children just loved him. A percentage of the money raised at this year's event will go to inner city development so they can continue their mission. Radel says they are grateful and looks forward to this event. It's um, a very uh, big event to lift the culture. Uh, of our community. And that is what our focus is. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. And don't forget, Muertos Fest is happening this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, so you can go to our website at KSAT.com for all the details. 947, 61 degrees. We'll be right back. Black Friday and Cyber Monday are just weeks away, but November offers plenty of bargains even before the big shopping events. Deal News recently rounded up some of the items you can save on as November sales get underway. Now, Halloween is this weekend. You can look for sales on everything from costumes to decorations as retailers look to clear out inventory. And early in the month, look for Veterans Day sales. Deal News says last year there were significant savings from retailers from Macy's to Eddie Bauer. And with holiday baking getting underway, watch for specials on things like candy pumpkin, green beans, and other staples. And staying in the kitchen, check your cookware. If you update your collection, November is a good time to find bargains. Deal News says to check Nordstrom Rack, Kohl's, and Target, among other retailers, for specials. And if by chance you're shopping for a wedding dress, November is a good month to do so. Dress retailers are looking to clear out last season's stock and free up space for new looks in the new year. You may find discounts from as much as 40%, maybe even double that on the clearance racks. And now's the time to find savings on seasonal products like pumpkins, sweet potatoes, and winter squash. For more on where to find November savings, check out the full story at dealnews.com. We've been talking about Muertos Fest all week and the many altars that will be on display at Hemisphere this weekend, but there's one that you may want to pay extra close attention to. And students from the art club at Lanier High School created an altar to honor the 19 kids and two teachers who were killed in Uvalde five months ago. Our Stephanie Jimenez got to meet with some of the students and teachers behind the creation and shows us what went into this special altar. 
Welcome to the Lanier Art Club, where everyone is hard at work. Every Thursday after school, under the direction of Miss Jennifer Arce and Mr. Michael O'Neill, students split into groups and create. Paper flowers here and paintings everywhere. Everything handled with precision. It has to be because all of what you see is dedicated to the 19 students and two teachers who were killed at Robb Elementary May 24th. It's still, you know, kind of weighs heavy. It's in the back of my mind all the time coming to school. You know. Since class began in August, this group has been working on an altar for the Uvalde victims from Huertos Fest. First, they designed it, and now each piece that will make up the finished product is coming to life. Lexi Nieto is working on something special to honor Jackie Casares. She wanted to be a vet. She wanted to do that because she had, I believe, like four dogs, and she loved them a lot, which I can relate to. I love my cat. I'm working on a desk for Leila Salazar. Each of the 19 Uvalde students will have a desk, and they'll surround two bigger desks, which will honor Miss Eva Mireles and Miss Irma Garcia. I knew that they, they love their kids, like they died protecting their kids, and that's something I would do as well, that I was put in the same situation, I would do that for my kids. I have some type of love for them because it was a really sad thing that happened. All of this is like they're coming from their own minds, like they're, they really got involved, really did the research um, for each individual student, as well as the teachers and what they wanted to include on the altar. None of these students or teachers knew the victims, but feel connected to them. Their hope is knowing their loved ones will never be forgotten. I want them to feel like as if their child is there, like if they're being remembered on that day, that's that's what the holiday, the purpose of the holiday is, to not forget your loved one, to honor them that day, to keep them alive. Stefania Jimenez, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Stefania. Well, San Antonio's very own The Last Bandoleros are back in town. The local band was on a summer tour in Germany, followed by performance on GMA, and tonight they will be at the Tobin Center Riverwalk Plaza. That's right. The tree also celebrating the release of their new album, Tex Flex Folklorico. They say their new sound developed over the pandemic, inspired by a 2019 performance in honor of drummer and singer uh, singer's late father, the Tejano legend, Emilio Navaira. We were approached by the San Antonio Symphony to do a tribute show to my dad. And so I believe in learning those songs and, and you know, having to sing them live in front of his fans, it was very therapeutic for me. Stage. And coming up on KSET News Now at 11 a.m., Alicia Barrera sits down with the last bandoleros ahead of tonight's concert. You can stream on KSET Plus, KSET.com, and YouTube. All right, let's get one last look at these roadways. Things look like they've cleared out there. Finally, off US 90 Loop 1604, there was a pretty big uh, overturned vehicle there, but that has already wrapped up. And as we had a look around there, there's 35 at New Braunfels. It was a pretty busy morning for a while, but thankfully it looks like it's dwindled down, Justin. Thanks, sir. And as we look at radar one last time here, the warnings have gone away. We've just got some rain now around Gonzales. That'll continue to press east towards Howitzville. Quero, you may get some rain out of this. The rain has moved out of Kennedy. It is done here in San Antonio, but what you can look for in the next couple of hours, cloudy skies, gusty winds, and those winds get even stronger by this afternoon. So if you have plans to go to any Friday night football games, know it is going to be windy and somewhat cool, too. Winds could gust around 30 miles per hour. Yeah, good reminder there. Great job today. Very busy. Yeah, you you guys as have well. Been busy. <laughs> You're going to see some whiskers around here oh. next week. The start of no <laughs> shave. November. November. Yes. About to yes. get a little hairy. Have a good weekend. <laughs>